The man in charge of Carl's Jr. and Hardee's is Andy Puster. When he took over, the company was in debt. Just four years later, they were making hundreds of millions of dollars. Now you employ 70,000 Americans. What did you do that your predecessor didn't? Hardee's was in trouble. The food wasn't any good, the service was bad, and the restaurants were dirty. So I knew what the problem was right away. <laughs> but were they stupid? Were they lazy? What was it, going on? It, they were entrenched. Matter of fact, my first, my second memo as CEO was the next person that answers a question with something to the effect of, because we've always done it that way, will be fired. Just to let you know how bad things were, my first memo was no more people behind the counter unless they have all their teeth. So it was a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a situation that needed to be addressed. But once we changed, once we got the restaurant straight, now we still had a problem, which was only elderly people felt comfortable at Hardee's. People didn't feel like it was a restaurant for them. So we needed to change, and we did that with an advertising campaign. We wanted to appeal to young people, so we targeted young, hungry guys. If you've seen our ads, you know that we target young, hungry guys. Uh, and that worked very well. And you don't worry that someone from the government's anti-discrimination task force is going to say, you have to hire a certain number of people with no teeth? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, actually it's funny, being a lawyer myself, I knew enough not to ask the legal department if I could send that memo out because they would have told me no. <laughs> so, so we sent it out anyway and it seemed to work just fine. You started oh, yeah. in the business scooping ice cream at Baskin and Robbins. I did. Minimum wage, dollar an hour. I never thought I could support a family of four on that wage, but it was... <laughs> And I, and I learned a lot. I learned about customer service. I learned about inventory. That was a, a good background for me, a good start, a good first step on that ladder. You painted houses, you cut lawns. Now yep. there are new rules about the age when people can work and the minimum wage, of course. People view this as this is just fair for people. You can't pay them so little. Well, I tell you, I, I have a 16-year-old son, and I, and I really love him. Uh, there, there's no way in the world I'd pay that kid $12 an hour to do something. I, you know, it, it's, <laughs> we're losing a generation of people because we've eliminated the jobs that those people normally filled. How do you pay somebody $15 an hour to scoop ice cream? How good could you be at scooping ice cream? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's just not a job that, that where you could compensate somebody like that. So, and in a few cities, that's about to be the minimum. How do, you, how do you lift everybody in this country to $15 an hour and not have areas where there are economic problems? We need to create jobs. People need jobs. They need the opportunity that comes with work. They need the dignity of work. That's what I experienced. That's what Steve Wynn experienced. That's what I'm sure most of you experienced. If you don't have that, you miss something, you lose something, and when, we, when the government steps in and, try and con tries to control these things, we lose jobs. <laughs> the only way that you can uh, reduce poverty and increase opportunity is economic growth. That's, that's it. There's, the government can't do it. You need economic growth, and there's one system in the history of the world that produces enough economic growth to meaningfully reduce poverty and meaningfully increase opportunity, and that's free market capitalism. <laughs> Which is under attack by well-intended regulation. How long does it take you to get permission to open a restaurant? We have restaurants in 33 countries and 45 states, and in Texas it's 60 days. Which is the success, but it's still two months. Yeah. Shanghai, China, 63, okay? In Russia, we opened a restaurant on uh, Karl Marx Prospect, so Karl Marx Avenue in Novosibirsk, which is in Siberia, in 125 days. In LA, it takes 280. <laughs> I, I can open a restaurant faster in Siberia than I can in California. So, it, and this is... <laughs> and what, what are the rules? What, what do they want to know, or what do they demand? The permitting is ridiculous. They make us put in stoplights and, and curb cuts and plant trees, you know, two blocks away. Uh, everybody on the planet wants input. You've got to get approvals from the city, ap approvals from the county, approvals from the state. You have to satisfy federal regulatory requirements. We now have a single-spaced list of federal, state, and local requirements that we hand out for every restaurant we open in California that's, I think, 14 or 16 single-spaced pages. You can't grow. You can't build restaurants. You can't build a new Walmart. You can't build that new grocery store, that new office building, if you can't use the land, if you can't get through the regulatory process. Thank you for for fighting that, Andy Puster.